If y'all are watching this on Tuesday, August 16th, we're hosting the Sleeper Bowl tonight. We're literally drafting with A.J. Dillon, with Tyler Algier. I can't wait to ask him about being the A-string running back on his team and a bunch of your other favorite you know, content creators in the space. We are going live on our YouTube channel tonight, 8.45 p.m. Eastern time for the Sleeper Bowl. It's our first real fantasy draft of the summer, so if you've been following along, you get to see how, how much I fuck drafts up in the actual middle of them. Love to analyze, can't draft for shit. It's going to be a really fun time, so make sure uh, your shirts are tucked. Make sure you got your mark ingredients ready. 8.45 p.m. Eastern time, right bike here on the YouTube channel. We shall see you there. Before we get into it, though, here are some guys I'm thinking about drafting in tonight's draft because it's a 14-team league, so you need to start looking at some safe players. Not everybody can just be high upside. I don't want to finish in 14th. That would be fucking embarrassing. We have the 13th pick, and I think we're going to be ripping. I think a couple of these guys will be on our radar around the 13th pick and the 16th pick. So today's episode is going to be eight bust-proof players for 2022 fantasy football. These aren't necessarily guys that I love, you know, being safe doesn't always mean being a good pick. Sometimes you got to shoot for upside. Sometimes if you're in a league with 14 people, you got to mix and match. You want some safety up front because you know your first, second, third, fourth round picks are the most valuable. They're going to score you the highest percentage of your fantasy points on a weekly basis. So it is important to get some of these guys, you know, in the mix, in the draft, off the waiver, whatever, 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 whatever. So here are eight of them. Y'all know we got to tuck it in first, though. Stop yelling. Let's start off with the quarterbacks. We'll go one quarterback. We'll go super flex. First off is Jalen Hurts, man. I, I just don't see a way that this dude fails. There's been nothing throughout camp that tells you there's going to be any sort of quarterback battle or there's going to be any sort of short leash for Jalen Hurts is probably the better words. Because there were times last year where he was throwing very inaccurately and you know, Gardner Minshew, whoever was going to come in and take his spot, it doesn't seem like they're anywhere near getting to that line this year. I mean, he would have to throw the ball really fucking poorly, but I think he'll be fine because this is an offense with the number one ranked offensive line, incredible weapons all over the field, Dallas Goddard, Devonta Smith, A.J. Brown, where he won't even have to do much. He just has to make sure he can throw the ball short behind the line of scrimmage, intermediate at a somewhat accurate level, and those weapons can do a lot of the rest. So Jalen Hurts, the weapons, the offensive line being number one, and just uh, an unprecedented upside with the rushing stuff, all right? So I've moved him all the way up to quarterback four in my rankings right now. And our rankings are available in our draft guide. The easiest way to get access to our draft guide is through prize picks, all right? Throw $10 down on prize picks, prizepicks.com or the app. The link to the app will be in the description. Use code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more, and you're going to get $20 to play with on their app, plus the draft guide absolutely for free. Kirk Cousins and Matt Ryan both kind of fall into the same category for me. Listen to this. Kirk Cousins has finished outside of the top 14 fantasy quarterbacks once in the last seven years. One time, and he is working with maybe not even arguably his best group of weapons ever this year with Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen and Dalvin Cook and Irv Smith, if he could stay healthy. This is an offense that's going to be more pass heavy this year. So Kirk, I absolutely love, again, one time out of the top 14 fantasy quarterbacks over the last seven years. And that's around where he's getting drafted. Quarterback 13, 14, 15, 16 is where you'll typically see this guy go off the board. So Kirk, I think is super safe. I think he's going to give you those 4,400 yards, near 30 touchdowns. If they go a tick heavier in the pass category, I mean, he's put up career years of 4,900 passing yards of 34 passing touchdowns. We could see him flirt with those type of numbers this year. So I think Kirk is an extremely safe floor quarterback, as is with Matt Ryan, maybe not as pass heavy or pass high voluminous, voluminous as a guy guy like Kirk Cousins, but Matt Ryan coming over from the situation he was in last year was terrible. And now he's got an offensive line. He's got pretty good weapons, but he's got more importantly, this run game that will allow play action to excel here in Indianapolis. So I love the offensive system. I think it's going to be extremely efficient. You look at what like Philip Rivers, who was basically Big Ben last year in his last year in Indianapolis. So I think Rivers put up 4,200 passing yards, 24 passing touchdowns. I think Matt Ryan can easily surpass those numbers. I think he's better right now than what Philip Rivers was at the end of his career. I want to talk about a duo of teammates that I really, really like, and I started tweeting about them this morning. Make sure you're following me on Twitter, at Nick Ercolano. The Baltimore Ravens pass catchers, man. Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman. I've been hesitant to get high on them all offseason, but we're here. Look at us. Look at us. Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman, man. I'm in. The reports for all these running backs have been terrible. 
Like Gus Edwards, they say there's very, very, very unlikely that he's not starting the year on the pup. So there goes four games at the minimum. Everything out of J.K. Dobbins, I mean, extreme red flags. Not going to end up playing in preseason. They said he, they had to take him out of practice like yesterday or whatever. If, if they're still having all these, like, there's so many concerns about his legs still. We're getting really close to the season. This is really a really, really big red flag. I don't care that you think he's going to be 100% by the start of the season. Everything else is telling us otherwise. So if we have two of their top runners, their two top runners down before the season starts, there's a very good chance that this offense looks way more similar to last year's offense than it did two years ago. And I was on the complete opposite side of that two, three months ago because I figured that these uh, recoveries would go semi-smoothly. And as the news has crept out and they've gone worse and worse, we flip the script and we are bike to a somewhat pass-heavy team in Baltimore. Last year, Hollywood saw 146 targets. He didn't even play a full 17 games. That was 26.7% target share in Baltimore. Mark Andrews, 153 targets, 26.6% target share there, number one overall amongst tight ends. That is a whopping 53.3% of the total team targets those two saw combined last year. That was the single highest target share rate amongst two teammates in the NFL last year. There was only five teams overall, including Baltimore, so four other teams that had a teammate duo go over 50% of the target share. San Fran with Debo and Kittle. You had the Rams with Cup and Woods. You had Seattle with Metcalf and Lockett. And you had Minnesota with Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen. All right. And when you look at, and the reason I feel so fucking confidently talking about Bateman being in this same situation as Hollywood last year is there is nothing on this depth chart behind Bateman. It is so bad. Like, I don't care that you like Tylen Wallace coming out of college. The guy did absolutely nothing in his rookie year. Didn't have a glimpse of anything saying that he's going to break out for whatever reason this year. He's listed as like the fourth wide receiver on the depth chart right now. There's nothing behind Rashad Bateman telling me that he is going to get an insane number of looks, just an insane per percentage of this offense and the passing offense. So I think once again, of course, it's going to have to run through Andrews and Bateman. So I'm all in on uh, Mark Andrews now. He's been moving further and further up my rankings, which again, you can get in our draft guide, the only place to get him. Prize picks, promo code BDGE. And Bateman's a guy that I'm I'm going to be targeting in most of the middle rounds of my drafts this year. Very, very high in him. Love them as a prospect. Love him even more. Now with the current situation, three running backs we're going to rip off. The high caliber dudes here. Najee Harris, Joe Mixon, and Nick Chubb. I think all of these guys are extremely safe for fantasy football. I think they're bust proof. I think they're going to get a ton of touches. When you look back at last year, Najee Harris literally led the NFL in touches. Joe Mixon was third in the NFL in touches. And Nick Chubb was 12th in NFL touches last year, despite missing three games. All three of them lack something in their game. And that's the reason why they're not early first round picks right now, right? We've been kind of pushing off Najee Harris for all, all summer. That's because his ADP started the summer like fifth overall. Then it moved back to sixth and seventh. And now if you're looking at different sites, he's around pick 11, 12, 13. That's, I'm completely comfortable taking a dude who literally led the NFL in touches at the end of the first round. But when he was going early, mid first round, I pumped the brakes a little bit because again, there's an offense with question marks. This is, we don't know how efficient they're going to be. Their offensive line still pretty much stinks. He doesn't provide explosive plays. When you look at Mixon and Chubb, you have questions about their passing game. Nick Chubb doesn't catch passes. Mixon catches a few more. Chubb's got more explosiveness, so he rips off those 60, 70, 80 yard touchdown runs, but Mixon's offense is way better. They have an improved offensive line, which allows him more goal line opportunities. Chubb's probably going to be playing behind Brissett for majority of the year. So I think all of these guys are really safe going into the situations this year because their touch volume should be so damn high. So where you're getting them in drafts, I'm comfortable drafting. However, I wouldn't expect much more upside from their draft position. If Najee's the RB7, I'm not expecting an RB2 finish. If Joe Mixon is the RB9, I'm not expecting another RB3 finish because he had 16 touchdowns last year. That's not something that's repeatable in the slightest, okay? So those guys on this list, we have Najee Harris, we have Joe Mixon, we have Nick Chubb, we have Rashad Bateman, we have Mark Andrews, we have Jalen Hurts, we have Kirk Cousins, we have Matt Ryan. I think they're all bust proof. I think they will all finish at or a little bit higher than their positional rankings in fantasy this year. Good picks, not going to lose you your league, but if you're looking for a little bit more upside than these guys, I would probably go elsewhere. But if you've already taken a lot of high upside risk type picks in your drafts, I would probably look at these guys. You know, it, it's all it's all the spectrum. It's all looking at the borderline of the picks that you've made, right? You're looking at how do I piece my team together? Did I go too heavy at this position? Did I go too risky here? Is this good value in the third, fourth, fifth round? If not, you start to weigh the options here. Um, so that is all I'm going to be fucking blabbering about for the rest of the day. If you enjoyed the video, Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. 
Uh, we'll be doing videos like this for the rest of the summer. We've got the Sleeper Bowl kicking off tonight. Do not forget to set your fucking alarm clocks. Take a nap. Get the Marg ingredients fucking ready. Get your voices chapped up and ready to fucking yell tonight, all right? The one time all year I will allow y'all to yell. Sleeper Bowl tonight, 8.45 p.m. Eastern time. See you there. Hit up prize picks. we got some good games coming up for this next slate of preseason week. Love you. I'm out.